Okay, folks, so uh, part three, here goes. So that gets us up into the Love Divine Age and uh, where we've been. And well, now we're going to kind of, we're going to really go out there. Okay, this is, this is the part where it starts getting out there. And if my observation is correct on the rest of this, as it has been to this, has been thus far, which I think at this, this point, I think a lot of people wouldn't argue it. Uh, but the next part, this is just what I see. And I can't help but say it, see it any other way. I can't help but see how it could be any other way. So anyway, what happened next? Um, Cell reached his perfect form. Okay. What, what I'm saying is, is that we're, we've kind of been in this love divine era in a sense. And I believe that uh, moving forward, uh, we're going into different things and uh, going into different areas. And so anyway, I believe that this next part is kind of ex, uh, kind of is like in the love divine era and moving forward is what I think uh, of Dragon Ball Z. I think it relates to, to this time frame is what I'm talking about in, our, in, uh, in accordance with the message. So anyway, what happened was, in Dragon Ball Z, Cell reached his perfect form. Okay, so at this point, everybody is trying to figure out, is trying to deal with Cell. So what they do is, the Z Fighters, there is, on, on Kami's Lookout, which was the building above the Earth, on the pole above the Earth, there is a special building called, or special dimension, essentially, called the hyperbolic time chamber. And what happens is, is you can go in the hyperbolic time chamber for what is on Earth time, one hour. But if you stay in there for one hour, you will have been in there for a whole year. So so you, you go in there and you're in there for a whole year, but you come out and you've only been gone from regular Earth time for one hour. So what it did was, was it allowed people to train to defeat Cell for a whole year in there. But they could do it only in one hour. Because Cell, you know, they had to they had to be prepared because, you know, Cell was Cell was super strong, so they're they're trying to figure out how that they can get a lot of training in to essentially catch up with his strength and maybe somehow defeat him and save the earth um, in in a short amount of time. So that's what they did. So anyway, these guys have been, some of them have been training in the hyperbolic time chamber already. And Cell hits perfect form and they, they come out. The two of them have been trained in there already. One of them was Trunks. And the other, the first two to train, to my remembrance, was Trunks and Vegeta. Vegeta is Trunks' father from the regular timeline. And then there is Trunks from the future timeline who had came back to their timeline. Uh, and inadvertently brought Cell with him. He's in there training with his father, Vegeta. Okay, his father from the old timeline, but nonetheless, his father. Okay, because see, in the regular timeline, Trunks was a baby. Okay, so he was there too. But anyway, the future Trunks, we call, they call him future Trunks. Future Trunks and his father were training in the hyperbolic time chamber. Okay, so they come out. They're both Saiyans, obviously. So they're both super Saiyans. So that means they're all third coming. We're talking about third coming people here at the very least. Okay. So they come out of the hyperbolic time chamber and they go to fight Cell. Okay. So they had been in there for one whole year of training. Okay. And it turned out that Vegeta, Trunks' dad, goes up against Cell first. Okay. And one of my favorite episodes of Dragon Ball Z, he blows Cell's arm off with, a, with an energy attack. Not to mention, Dragon Ball Z is all about energy. It's all about that they use these energy blasts and techniques and attacks to uh, attack with. So, so anyhow, um, so anyhow, that's kind of what it's based around. And I think it, it's kind of vindicative of the message, you know, the, the energy aspect of the message out here. Of what you know because energy has been a big part of it and you know talking about energies and such so anyway uh, so so Vegeta comes out Vegeta and Trunks come out 
And like I said, uh, Trunks was the guy that was from two generations in the future, Aquarius. Okay, so they come out. Vegeta fights Cell first and cannot defeat Cell. Okay, then Trunks is up next. And Trunks is by one of the other Z fighters. And he's getting ready to fight Cell. And so he powers up to Super Saiyan. And at this point, nobody had ever went beyond Super Saiyan. Okay, this was... So Trunks powers up to Super Saiyan to get re ready to fight Cell. Then what happens is he he says he's he's like uh, uh, I, while I was in the hyperbolic time chamber I found a level beyond Super Saiyan and and they're like a level beyond Super Saiyan what are you talking about you know nobody had ever even conceived it so anyway Trunks powers up to a level beyond Super Saiyan which is to Dragon Ball Z junkies I think is known as um, ascended Saiyan. He went beyond Super Saiyan. Okay, what this represents is, is Super Saiyan meant to be a third coming, to be third coming. Okay, Trunks, or Don Parnell, dare I say, he went to, he was the first essentially person, not only did he kill Frieza and finish off the second coming, he went to a level called Ascended Saiyan, which was essentially Love Divinism. Because Love Divinism, it was a level above Super Saiyan, which was third coming, which they could not, they couldn't, most of them couldn't conceive that you could go beyond Super Saiyan. They couldn't conceive that you could go beyond third coming, you see. Well, you've got these third coming guys out here right now that are Super Saiyan, but they can't conceive going to what was called Ascended Saiyan, you see. So, so Trunks, Don Parnell, goes into Love Divinism, the ideology, and he goes, he's the first person into, essentially, in the show, in, the, in Dragon Ball Z. Trunks was the first person that ever went into the level of Ascended Saiyan. Okay, so, and, and Don Parnell essentially goes into Love Divinism and goes beyond regular Super Saiyan, breaks into Love Divinism, and goes into a level called... Uh, he went into love divinism, but Trunks went into the level of the ascended Saiyan. It had ascended beyond the third coming. It had ascended beyond Super Saiyan. Okay, so anyway, Trunks, Trunks is fighting Cell in this ascended Saiyan form. Okay, and it turned out that he could not defeat Cell in that form because. The reason he could not defeat Cell, the reason he could not defeat this conglomerate of, of all of us, or however you want to figure this enemy to be, essentially, the reason he could not defeat Cell in that form was that, for a couple reasons, really, but the main reason was, was that in, in, Whenever he went, whenever Trunks went into that Ascended Saiyan form, he bulked up. Well, the way they told it in the show was, was that he, he bulked up to a bigger size. And when he did that, he used so much energy in the transformation that essentially he became, it, it weakened him some, even though he was much stronger. He, he lost speed, and it took a lot of energy to do that. Okay, so... So Cell taught him, he's like, you know, he fought Cell for a while and he wasn't getting anywhere with Cell. And Cell taught him, he's like, he's like, it won't, what you're doing won't work. He said it's, his idea was to, Trunks's idea was to just get stronger, essentially. Was to keep going with the process of thinking that you could keep going, essentially, to a changing to a new level. And that you could get that he could, he thought that he could defeat Cell by transforming, essentially, or dare I say, changing. He thought that you could transform. You could keep transforming. You could find a new level to transform to, and that would be how that you would defeat Cell, essentially. Okay, and it turned out that that wouldn't work, because for one thing, Cell could transform into that too if he wanted to. So it didn't help. And he, he, Cell recognized that Trunks was strong, 
but he couldn't, he didn't have the speed. He didn't have the, there was, there was a lack there. He had lost the energy. Like I said, I explained it the best I could. You'll have to watch the show. But anyway, Trunks basically mistakenly thought that he could, he could keep transforming and that would make him be able to defeat Cell. He thought he had it in the bag. He thought that by transforming to a level above Super Saiyan, he could defeat Cell. And that was, the short version is, he thought that a transforming level, that transforming again, again, after had, they had already transformed the first time, he thought that transforming again would defeat Cell, and it, and it wouldn't, okay? So, it is my opinion that, and I can see it no other way, and I have thought this for a very long time otherwise anyway, that the notion of continuing, see, the idea was that we should change. Whenever we went into the third coming, there was the, Don Parnell told the story of how that, of how that uh, he had the visions of uh, just change, you know, how that, what it was, uh, he was a wolf and then, or something like that, and then he turned into an eagle and then he went into the sun and then the idea was to get everybody to change, okay? So in terms of the third coming, I think that was correct. I mean, I wouldn't think it was correct. I, I, I would acknowledge that it was correct, that we needed to change. However, I'm not sure now that the message is change. Because in Dragon Ball Z, the transformation once to, to defeat the old enemy, transforming was the way to do it. But when it came to the new enemy, when it came to, in terms of defeating the old Pisces enemy, transforming was the way to do it. But whenever it comes to the new Aquarius message, I'm not sure that transforming or changing is going to be the way to do it. I think that's the point of all this. And so anyway, and I had thought that for a long time, that it's like this. If you think about it, messages always change, right? Well, what's been our message? Our message had been to change. Well, did anybody ever think that perhaps we're going to have to change from a message of changing? <laughs> the message of change, see, the message can't stay the same for forever. At least that's my opinion on it. Okay, we have had a message of change. That has been our message. As sooner or later, I believe that the message is going to be something else. The message is not going to be to change. The message is going to be something different, okay? And I think some people are beginning to somewhat acknowledge to some degree on, on that. That's, that's kind of coming in, even, even amongst the love divine. You know, they might have a different idea on it than I do, but, uh, but uh, to some degree, that's kind of coming in, I think. You know, uh, so anyway... Uh, so anyway, but there's more to the story than just that because even though, I'm not saying that it's don't change either because even if you change from a message of changing, you would have still changed. So really, it, it's not really wrong either because it's like Trunks, oddly enough, whenever he went into the Ascended Saiyan form, that comes back later on in the story and actually you did have to do that. I'll get to it, okay? I, I got to tell the story. It's it's more in depth. It's so in depth. I'm I'm doing my best to try to keep it to where it's understandable. But let me just tell the rest of the story, and then it'll all fall more into place. Because let's just say the idea of going into ascended saying as love divine. Actually, you do have to do that. You do have to do that. So I don't I don't want to say that. I don't want to say it was wrong because it's actually right. Okay, it couldn't defeat Cell, but you. But it, later on, we find out in the story that you do have to do that. Okay, so anyway, so. So anyway, the next part is this: after Trunks finds out that transforming won't defeat Cell, Cell decides that he wants to. He couldn't understand how the Trunks had gotten so strong in a short amount of time, and uh, so anyway, Cell really just wants a good fight. He was a even though he was a villain, villains sometimes have very good character personal personalities, and Cell had a great character personality. And so anyway, his idea was, was that he wanted to have a fighting tournament. He, didn't, he wasn't going to kill Trunks. He was just going to have a, he said, go tell everybody in a week we'll have a fighting tournament for the fate of Earth. He said, if anybody can defeat me, then Earth will be saved. And if not, he was going to destroy the Earth. Okay, so anyway, Trunks, he's, he's like, 
if you can get stronger, go get stronger. I want a good fight. Okay, so Trunks is like, yeah, maybe we can get stronger. Maybe we can find a way to get stronger or, or whatever, or find some way to try to defeat him. Maybe not necessarily by getting stronger, but whatever. So anyway, so anyhow, Trunks goes back and tells them they're gonna, there's going to be a tournament in like a week. So Cell goes off, builds his tournament ring, and then what happened was, was Goku and Goku's son, Gohan, were training in the hyperbolic time chamber. And Goku was a Super Saiyan. Gohan had been there. He was like a teenage boy. And, and Gohan is the next star in this story, dare I say. And he's the star that I think is going to come, or perhaps is already in the works here, which I believe that it is. Uh, he's the one that I want to tell about, really. I got you all up this far so that I could tell you this, because the rest of this has been history, basically, so far. I've just been telling history. Okay, so uh, let's get up more to modern day and, in the, and, and perhaps even in the future, but at least modern day. Um, Goku and Gohan had went in the hyperbolic time chamber after Vegeta and Trunks got out and went and fought Cell. Goku and Gohan, Goku is a Super Saiyan. Gohan became a Super Saiyan in the hyperbolic time chamber. Goku was in there training, and he's like, watch this, Gohan, and he... And Go Goku powers up to this ascended Saiyan level, just like Trunks. And Gohan's looking at him, he's like, yeah, Dad, you can defeat Cell. You've, you've went a level above Super Saiyan. And Goku uh, looks at him, and he's like, no, not in this form. And he's like, why not? And he says, because this form takes too much energy to transform into. It's not about transforming. Transforming won't, won't work. It won't work by transforming. It won't work by transforming into a new level. Okay. So anyway, he's like, well, how are we going to defeat him then? And he says, what we need to do, Gohan, is we need to stay in our level of Super Saiyan, not waste energy transforming into a new level necessarily, but we need to stay in the level of Super Saiyan to, to where all the time, to where it's natural to us. The only times, because what they would do was they would, they would power up and they couldn't stay powered up for forever. And then they would power back down to like regular form. Okay, so anyway, uh, and they would lose energy in the, in the process of transformations that they could have used to fight with. So anyway, he tells him, instead of, he, he's like, try staying Super Saiyan for the whole day. So anyway, what they did was, was they trained for and stayed in the regular Super Saiyan level all day long and for days on end. And it, what, hap what happened was, was they became natural. They never had to, they, their natural state of being was not in a regular black-haired form, but it, it became in the Super Saiyan form. It became their natural state of being, okay? So they, they wasted no energy on any transformation. They just stayed in that form and wasted no energy on any transformation, okay? So that made them natural in that state. So they had attained to, like, essentially a third coming level, but constantly, constantly, never even, there was no, second coming was just not even heard of. You just, they never even went into that form. It was just a constant third coming form, at, at, at least, okay, at that point. So when they come out of the hyperbolic time chamber, everybody's out there, all the Z fighters are out there, and you know, cause some of them are getting, waiting for them to come out so they can go back in. So Goku and Gohan come out of the, hyperbolic time chamber and their golden hair, but they just look totally natural. They're just acting totally natural because whenever they would turn into Super Saiyan, they would act a little freaky, you know, because it was just, it, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to stay in that form. So anyway, they would, they came out and, and they were Super Saiyan, but they were acting totally natural. And everybody's like, how are you guys doing this? And this, and, and the idea was, Go, I think Goku explained it to him, he's like, because we trained our for this to be our natural form, we stayed in this form all the time for like half a year, you know, and they're like, oh. So so anyway, he figured out a different way to do it. It wasn't about transforming. It wasn't necessarily about changing, okay? So anyway, the other ones go in. They go in the hyperbot time chamber, and Goku and Gohan are out there. And Goku is, he goes and he, he gets his power level tested essentially by one of the like the, the old heads, the old power heads from back in the day. That, which was a cat. Anyway, so this cat, cat dude, he's like, 
corn. He's like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, anyway, Goku goes down to corn. He's like, corn, uh, I'm going to power up. See if you think that I can beat Cell. And Goku powers up to like his maximum power level. And corn looks at him. He's like, I don't think you can, Goku. I don't think you can beat Cell. And he's like, okay, thanks for telling me. And he's like, that's what I thought. And, and everybody's like, he, Goku's weirding everybody out. Because, see, Goku was the hero. He was like the main dude. And he's weirding everybody out because he's saying, I can't defeat Cell. And they're like, well, if you can't defeat him, we're all dead. You know, that's pretty much the idea. They're like, well, who's going to save us if you don't? Because Goku saved him like every time. I mean, in the old, old part of Dragon Ball Z, he was like, Goku was always the guy who stepped in and saved him. So anyway, they're like, what are we going to do now? Goku can't, he's, he don't even think he can beat him. So anyway, tournament time, comes down to tournament time. All the Z fighters, they gather to fight Cell, okay? And what they didn't know was, what they didn't know was, was Goku goes out first to fight Cell, okay? So Goku fights Cell, and he gets down to like the end, the end of the match, and Goku just stops, and he's like, because he's fought Cell to the max, he's tested his strength against Cell, and he's like, he looks at Cell, and he's like, Cell, you win. I can't, I can't beat you. And he's like, the Cell's kind of like, what? And he says, he says, yeah, he says, I can't beat you. He said, but there is one here who can. And he's like, who? And he says, and, and to everybody's total surprise, Goku looks at his teenage son and says, Gohan. Gohan can defeat you. And he's like, everybody's like, what? Gohan? He's a kid. He was a, you know, he's a teenage kid. And Goku says, no, he says, he says, you all are wrong because Gohan, ever since he was like four and five years old, had been beside them all fighting. He had, he had been fighting since he was a kid. And so what happened was, was Goku said, that Gohan would be able to do it because Gohan, he kind of got an early start in things and he was always there fighting. And he said that there was always something special about Gohan anyway. Everybody knew that, that Gohan kind of had the potential to be the strongest fighter, but he was never able really to take advantage of it to some degree. That was kind of how Go Gohan was, that was his characterization. So anyway, so, so he says, Gohan can do it. Gohan has been here with us. You all will understand. He's been here with us fighting since the very beginning, and even when he was a kid, and he, he went Super Saiyan and all this and that. And everybody's like, I don't know, man. Maybe. But anyway, so what, what Gohan represents, I've got to tell you all this. What I gather of it is, is that the love divine ideology represents the ascended Saiyan form of trunks, and that could not defeat Cell because it was... Because it, it, it turned out that, a, that transforming and changing wasn't the way to defeat Cell. It made him stronger, but it wasn't the way to defeat Cell. And Gohan, what Gohan represents, in my opinion, is a generation that is after the Love Divine ideology generation. Because in my opinion, the, the Love Divine generation, I, I think this is what it represents. The Love Divine generation kind of represents to me not my generation, not the younger generation out here. It represents kind of more the older generation. To some degree, the younger generation too, but really it does represent the younger generation too out here, but it represents kind of a generation that's kind of like a little younger than third coming, dare I say, but a little older than my generation or not even necessarily my generation, but definitely the, the ones younger than me. And so anyway, because I'm 35, so or 34, I'm 30, be 35 here in a couple of months. So so anyway, what I want to say is is that Gohan, even even kind of my generation, Gohan to me represents a generation in which Gohan was there when they fought Frieza. He was a kid when they fought Frieza. Okay. He was a young man when they when they went into this third coming era, which I said was before what was like kind of in the middle there. And then he's like a teenager in the Love Divine era, kind of like in the, in the uh, in Love Divine and even beyond era. Okay. So if you think about it, the generation of perhaps me or probably on down. We were 
there as kids. We were just kids when the the end of the second coming was finishing up. We were just kids. We we, we represent that generation. We rep that, well, everything I'm talking about here today with this Dragon Ball Z stuff is only I'm only able to talk to a generation that would understand it, a generation like my generation or even younger. You, these are the only people that are really going to understand this based on the fact that it's a medium of communication that they can understand because the older people are going to do their best to try to get it, but they haven't predominantly even watched the show. So what I'm saying is, is this Gohan, Gohan generation is, is us, is the kids that were, we were young when, when, when Frieza was the enemy. Gohan was young when Frieza was, was the enemy, mm -hmm. okay? And then, and then he come through, you know, it, we were, me and Kathy, we were young when the second coming still ruled and we were finishing that up. And then Trunks come along and Don Parnell come along and cut that down. We were young back in those days. We were, you know, we were kids. And then, and then uh, when, you know, when Trunks, when Trunks come along and, and cut it down, when Don Parnell come along and cut it down, like I said, everything plays out there exactly what it is, okay? So anyway, we were young. And then as we get older and older, the, the Gohan represents to me, the Gohan generation represents us, the young ones, me or probably younger than me or something like that anyway. So, so Gohan, so Goku's like, he's like, Gohan can do it because Gohan was here throughout all of it. He has been trained in a different way. He has not been trained, for one thing, he had not been trained to think that, that constant transformations would be the way to defeat Cell. He was trained in a different way, and he had been there since he was a kid. He had been there, okay? So, so, or he was a kid when those things were going on, let's say, because everybody else was there, but they weren't kids. But anyway, it was like, he was like, Gohan's been trained in this ever since. So anyway, he had he had different, there was a different, something a little bit different about Gohan in that regard. And another thing about Gohan, and I'll get right back to the story, is that Gohan, in, in the future, this is a little side note, but in the future, the future uh, timeline that Trunks came from, that, that future Trunks came from. His master, when they were fighting the androids in that timeline, and everybody else had died, was Gohan. Gohan in, his, in the future timeline had grown up, and he was the master. He was Trunks' master and trainer. Okay, so my thought on it is this, is that Aquarius is Trunks. It's two timelines into the future. Or not, or two two generations into the future. It is my opinion that Trunks, essentially Don Parnell or Trunks, came back to warn of, warn us all of what's going to happen. But in in his timeline, his master and trainer was Gohan. Okay, now not the young Gohan, but the grown up Gohan. So it is my opinion. It is my opinion. It stands to reason that the master of Aquarius, the master of the Aquarius mentality, of the Aquarius, what Don Parnell has essentially brought us, this Aquarius idea, ideology on things, is actually the generation, the younger generation now. We will grow up to be his master, essentially, because that's what happened in the timelines. The, the, the love divine ideology and all this stuff, the, the, the trunks, well, everything that trunks has brought us, everything that Don Parnell has bought, brought us, one day, not not perhaps now, but one day, whenever this generation grows up, it will be the master and teacher of that one. And that's that's the way it goes. It's the way it always goes. So Gohan now will one day be the master of that. He will be the master trainer of of that future type of ideology that has come back. Because Aquarius is weird because it skips one and then it comes back. You know, truthfully, I think of it like this. Aquarius is actually after Capricorn because, because Aquarius skips a generation. And then if you think of the thought process of Aquarius, it's actually after Capricorn 
because it goes beyond one generation and then it's the second generation. So it's probably somewhere after Capricorn, it thinks in terms, it's, it's positioned after Pisces and before Capricorn, but it thinks in terms of after Capricorn and before Sagittarius. Okay, that's the way it thinks, even though it's positioned back over here in, in, in a recessed position. Okay, but that's how it thinks. So, so anyway, that's what I think. So getting back to the story. Um, so anyway, Gohan, Gohan goes to fight Cell. And the rest of the story is pretty much Gohan and everybody fighting Cell, but mostly Gohan. And what happens is, is Gohan, Gohan had always had this ability inside of him to where if, if his friends were in danger, then this hidden ability would come out and would make him be able to realize his full power. But he couldn't do it until things got into a certain situation. That's, that's the story of Gohan. So anyway, Cell is basically killing everybody. Okay, he, I think Cell had, well, he was like trying to kill everybody. Pretty much he like beat, beat them near half to death. And I think he killed Trunks. Cell killed Trunks. And so anyway, uh, uh, and then he's like, he's got almost everybody else dead. Dead. I think he killed, he essentially ended up killing Goku. Okay, so Trunks and Goku were dead. And then, so anyway, uh, at some point, Gohan's inner inner strength releases. And I, I don't know if it took that long to get it to happen or what. I, I, they might have still been alive at that point. But anyway, at some point, Gohan's inner strength uh, comes to fruition. And it turns out what happened was, was this, was Gohan went into this weird in-between kind of state of being that was essentially Ascended Saiyan because Trunks had went to Ascended Saiyan. And Gohan had never been Ascended Saiyan. But Gohan went into this state of being that was the Ascended Saiyan state, but without all the energy loss, essentially, with, with a, a more natural type of Ascended Saiyan state somehow. It was just different. It was just a level that I think that the generation, the younger generation, is going to be able to attain to, that what we are seeing right here is, is just not it, exactly. And so anyway, Gohan snaps, okay? He's, he's had all he can take, and then he goes into his, his level of being, his power level, that is his inner, inner strength is let out. Okay, so anyway, he powers up, and then Cell, Cell notices it, because they can feel energies. And Cell notices it, and he's like, whoa. He's like, uh, you know, Gohan powers way up, and he gets this, this like the, the Ascended Saiyan form had lightning, lightning coming around their bodies. Okay, so anyway, he goes into this form that's, that's obviously like Ascended Saiyan. And so anyway, Cell looks at him and he's like, you're not going to make the same mistake Trunks did, are you? Because powering up won't defeat me. You can't defeat me just by transforming or powering up. And Gohan, although he had went to that form, because I think what it means is, is that you do have to go to the love divine form. That the way to defeat Cell is not just transforming, but you will transform. You will, you will understand love divinism, but there's something different to it. It's not, it's a different form than that. It's, Gohan had went into like some sort of different form. It was, he had the power of an ascended Saiyan. He had the power, the strength of the love divine message and what it gives, but it was a more natural form. Gohan had done it in a different kind of a way. And he was able to defeat Cell with that form. Cell didn't even understand it. Cell was, Cell was blindsided by it. He beat Cell with that form that he went into. And what I think all this, what the culmination of everything that I have told you all over the past three messages here, the th part three messages, is that as far as I can tell, what it's going to be that finally defeats this enemy that has been brought to us by Aquarius, essentially is it's going to be a form that is has the power of the love divine, but there's something different about it. It's, it's a different generation. 
it's it's there's it's got to be I think it's got to be two things it's got to be the power and understanding of the love divine ideology but it's got to be somehow it's different it's this it's a it's a younger generation I think it's the younger generation but with that mentality I don't think the older generation can do it I, I just don't think it's for them I don't want to say I just don't think it's for them to do it I think that the younger generation that's here now is going to take the power that they learn from the love divine and the fact that they're the younger generation and they have a different inner ability to unlock that and that's what does it and I think there's some sort of hidden inner ability of this younger generation that will go into a form that will have a strength power kind of like the love divine but it's but it also has this this strange different form of being and this different character and this different uh, special ability that comes out uh, and that has to come from this younger generation that's what I think it's I, I'm doing the best I can to explain it but this younger generation according to the story if I'm reading this right they have got just like Gohan had Gohan had a special different special ability and, he, and as they said, he had the power to be the, the strongest fighter, but, he, but it had to come out. It had to bring itself finally to fruition. And I think that this generation, this younger generation out here that I'm talking about, this Gohan, I think that they have this special ability. And when it comes to fruition, it will be like the power of the love divine, but it'll be something more. It'll be it'll be something that that didn't have, and it will be, it will be, it it will have transformed. Like I said, I didn't want to say transforming and changes was entirely wrong. It will have transformed, but it will have some other hidden special ability that along with it too. And I think it's got to be this younger generation to do it. I think it's going to take this younger generation to defeat this cell Aquarius enemy. That, that trunks won't be able to do it. The love divine won't be able to do it. It's, it's some, there's something else tied into it. This younger generation, when it finally snaps, when it finally snaps in this younger generation, if you watch Dragon Ball Z, Gohan had been tormented. He had been tormented by Cell, and then finally, finally it snapped. It's one, one of my favorite episodes of Dragon Ball Z is when Gohan, remember when Gohan finally snapped, and it, it was like the whole thing just went totally different? When Gohan finally snapped, and it was it was on then, and that's why I'm saying, one day, one day, I don't know when, I don't know how, I don't know if it's happened yet, but one day the younger generation out here, the younger generation that's been through all this from from their birth, and they grew up in all this, and they were kids whenever we was and and uh, you know dealing with freezing this in the second coming, and and they they are this Gohan type. One day it's going to snap in them. And they're going to have an understanding like that's going to be like Gohan's. And it's going to be something that nobody has ever seen. It's going to be a power that everybody's going to be in awe of. An understanding that everybody is going to be in awe of. Just like that those Z fighters were in awe of Gohan when it finally snapped. They were like, oh crap. It was like, this, this is something different. And so anyway, that's my take on it. I'm just waiting and I had been waiting for a long time because I knew this was the case for a long time that one day for the day when these younger generation when it does snap in them I can't wait for it because I know I know what it's going to be I've been watching it for a very long time and uh, and that's uh, those are the people that I wanted to tell this to most first and foremost in a way but everybody else who can get it because it's like this. At the end of the day, we all have different stories and timelines and such, and we're all Z fighters. Um, the, you know, I'm not telling, I'm not telling the older folk anything that they don't know. They know this. They know that, uh, uh, in a way, they they know that uh, uh, they've got parts to play and things to fulfill and things, certain things to do. Mm -hmm. And so do we, as the younger, younger, younger -er, or younger generations uh, they know that and uh, we we need to understand this too and we know it too so 
we're all Z fighters in this. We're all, at the end of the day, it was all of us against sale. It was everybody from the youngest to the oldest, all the Z fighters, uh, Trunks, Goku, uh, Gohan, everybody. You know, all the other people involved. Piccolo was there. The, the, uh, the uh, uh, combination of uh, good and bad having put itself into one was, was there too. He was helping them fight. Everybody was helping them fight. All these things are going to culminate together, but it's going to be Gohan. I'm looking for Gohan is what I'm trying to tell you. But all these other people are out here too, and they're all on our side. We're not on anybody. This is all of us against Cell. This is, this is everybody from me to Don Parnell to uh, the younger er generations than me and the little bit older than, than me and, 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 and even the third coming people and everybody, you know, whatever it might be. Anybody that's at least a super saiyan or whatever, they were all standing out there against Cell. So what I'm telling you is, is that we're, it's all of us against this enemy that is all of us culminated into one. It's all of us out here. It's, we're, we're all on the sidelines against this. It's not us against each other, it's us against that. Because that's the real enemy, not us. We are not enemies with each other. That's not how it went in Dragon Ball Z. We weren't enemies with each other. We were enemies against that, that, that conglomeration of, of one all put together. I think that's the natural enemy of Aquarius. I think that's, that's what Aquarius inadvertently brings. I think whenever we were brought into this age of Aquarius by, uh, by uh, you know, uh, the, the, the Aquarius uh, prophet himself, in my opinion, Don Parnell, and, and other people, when we were brought into this, you know, because it naturally had to be ushered in, he's just a, a natural, a natural, in my opinion, a natural, thing, a natural person that would come. It just naturally rose up because, I mean, what we're going to have, it's the age of Aquarius. Well, it goes to reason you'd have a, a Paul figure that is an Aquarian himself to usher us into this, okay? But inadvertently, I think, as we got ushered into the age of Aquarius, just like in Dragon Ball Z, Trunks came to, to get us prepared. Don Parnell came to get us uh, prepared for this, what was going to happen, you know? But inadvertently, when they did these things, they brought this cell monster with them. And I think that's what we're dealing with right now. I think, I think, that's, I think there is an enemy here. I think, there, I think Aquarius is, is not going to be lollipops and rainbows. I think that there is an enemy here. And, and uh, uh, you know, it, it might be a, you know, it's just a weird enemy. I mean, you know, uh, yeah. that's, you know, that's, it's, you know, what do you expect? Like I said, no, no Aquarius pun intended. It's weird. It's a weird enemy. You know, I, so anyway, I, I guess some people might not think, might think that, well, there's no enemy here because, you know, we've made everything one and together. Well, I think it's like, more like this. I think there is an enemy here, and that's true too. <laughs> I, I, I don't, oftentimes I think people mistake me for going backwards on that and saying, well, now, if you're going back to bringing up some old, old things, then you must be going backwards. And I'm like, no, not really. The way I'm trying to present it is, or the way I think of it is, is that all the things that, all the way up to the love divine, are true. I'm not saying that they are absolutely true. It's just that this is true beyond that. And, you know, it's a, it, I'm not saying what they're saying is not true. I'm saying what they're saying is true. But I'm just saying that, that in the age of that there is no enemies, or that there there is no good or evil, you know, or 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 that good and evil are all one. There could still be an enemy in even that, as as weird as that might sound to some. So anyway, um, that is uh, I guess that'll do it. And I uh, thank you all for listening. And uh, it's been fun.